big fat panda. I'm the big fat panda. Skadoosh. Hello and welcome to Big Fat Panda show number 60 and a half. I say half because it's kind of really like a mini show. I want to talk to you about what happened today. I got the opportunity to actually go into Toy Story Land. It was a hard hat tour. Uh, only a small part were we able to actually see, but we were there right by Slinky Dog, right in Andy's backyard. And also, I just want to say, I know that I get these privileges, which I enjoy so much because of you. If it wasn't for you watching, I would have none of it. So thank you. And I will continue to be open and honest with the, the people that watch me and let them know exactly what I think. So I've been excited about Toy Story Land from the beginning, but it's two attractions. It's Slinky Dog and the Alien Swirling Saucers. But I'm starting to get more excited about it now because I've seen it and it really does feel like you're in Andy's backyard. There is a great fence berm that goes around and the way they use the thick bamboo and grass, at least right now around Slinky Dog, it feels like you're in somebody's lawn playing. There's still a lot to be done. The new entrance for Toy Story Midway Mania looks fantastic. I was able to have Kelly Bornman, who I believe is part of the creative team or Imagineering at Disney, confirm that Mr. Potato Head is back or will be back in the queue for Toy Story Midway Mania. I can hear you. So Mr. Potato Head is coming back to Toy Story Land. He is returning to Toy Story Mania. All of our guests got to see him. They love him at being there in the queue. Um, and what's really fun is he's actually arrived at site, so we're putting all of our finishing touches on him so that you guys get to see him next month. Awesome. Thank you. I had to get out my camera really quick because she started to talk and then I made believe I didn't hear what she said just to get her. But that was really cool. I love animatronics and it's very important to me when I see things moving and, and animated, especially when I saw the penguin that's going in. I don't know if Disney uh, put some uh, video out of the penguin. I thought that maybe he would be a static figure, but I was so happy to see him singing and moving and talking. I like that type of thing. To see. It's after all the design and the years of development and fabrication, it's amazing for me to see the guests uh, having a great time, laughing together. What I want a guest to experience when they get to ride Slinky Dog Dash is actually feeling as though they're in Andy's backyard and they're able to see Andy's toys like Wheezy, Mike, and Mr. Spell right there in front of them. The lighting also stood out to me. It is really cool. It's uh, Tinker Toys. Are These big Tinker Toys are the lights that are going to shine on. So Toy Story Land will take a completely different look when it's night. You know, not like Pandora where the whole thing transforms but the coaster will light up and do things. The whole Slinky Dog coaster will look better at night. As a matter of fact, some of the items they showed us, like the, there's a Slinky Dog that goes around your neck and actually can attach almost like a light up scarf, if you will. But what that does, the actual coaster will do as well. We also had Chef David Hutnick, who I believe created the menu for Toy Story Land, tell us more about the food and uh, it doesn't disappoint. Uh, this is our uh, smoked turkey, house smoked turkey. Uh, this little lunchbox actually is going to be able to smoke its own uh, turkey, um, egg and peppers, onions and cheese on sourdough. This is our uh, brisket grilled cheese. It's got the Monterey Jack and cheddar, um, shaved smoked brisket, barbecue sauce, some dill pickle in there to cut the acid, and what's better on the outside uh, than just plain spread but garlic. Uh, fan favorite, I spent uh, 10 years in the Magic Kingdom and uh, most of that time at Cinderella's Castle, and I can't tell you the amount of times I was asked for a Monte Cristo sandwich that was off the menu many, many years before I ever got there. Uh, so we're kind of bringing it back in a different form. Uh, this is, again, that French toast that's on the s'more sandwich. Uh, but we got smoked turkey, ham, uh, Swiss cheese. We've got a little Dijon spread in there and a great raspberry jam. So you don't have to dip it. You can kind of walk around and get that complete bite without having to kind of juggle that tray and everything else. Um, but all of our sandwiches will come with a choice of sides. So you get that grilled cheese, we've got that tomato basil uh, bisque that you can dip it in just like that. Tomato soup, grilled cheese, a vegetable pasta salad, and um, our potato barrels. And then if you take something iconic, like a, a staple in the US of a Pop-Tart, and you set your pastry team loose on it, you get this. Okay, so we have two flavors. What you're seeing on top is the raspberry jam filled, um, and it's got uh, freeze-dried strawberries and uh, crispy strawberry pearls. But down below, you see that other version. That is a chocolate hazelnut spread that's, that's got a maple fondant icing or royal icing on top and candied bacon. Take any questions? Um, this is a very small and mighty location, 
So if you asked me to completely guess, and this is total speculation, anything can change, I would say there's probably not going to be pass holder previews. It looks like they are going to be working up to the last second to get this done on time. I should see it on June 28th. I will report back to you then. I'm excited about it, a little bit more than I was. Uh, it's coming along, pretty cool. And it does feel like you're in Andy's backyard, shrunk down. It's pretty cool. And thanks for watching this little mini episode. Until next time, Panda out. Keep giving out those panda hugs.